Hi, today we're going to talk about how to design and make this light box, wooden light box, that goes under the acrylic token box we made in our last episode. Hi, welcome to another making episode of Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And in our last making episode, we talked about how to make this acrylic token box for holding our custom game tokens. In this episode, I want to talk about this light box. It uses some similar methods that I showed uh, for the token box, but it's made in wood. It's glued together, but we use simple hardware to make sure that the layers of the wood register properly while we're gluing. I'm going to talk about also the simple LED battery-driven lighting that we're using here. Like the token box, the light box is built in multiple layers, and this is the top layer of the box. It's designed to go under the token box, so to make sure I get everything lined up properly, I've pulled in a drawing from the token box so I can see that the feet line up in the holes I'm cutting in the top layer. I also have registration marks here. Uh, small wire brads are going to go into those holes and make sure that all the gluing is done uh, very accurately on each of those top layers. This is the second layer that the three bulbs are going to stick up through. You see it still has those same registration marks and then holes for the three bulbs. The next layer down is the light bulb layer. It actually holds the bulbs and here I have a rastered circle. The black means that this is rastered instead of engraved and you'll see how that's different when we get to the actual cutting on the laser. Inside of each one of these rastered pockets which are just engraved, they're not actually cut out. There are two little holes there for the wires on the bulb to poke through, and you'll also see that when we assemble the box. The next layers down, we have a couple of layers that are just designed to give depth to the box so that the battery pack fits in. It has registration holes, and it has some new holes in the corner because there are going to be screws coming in up from the bottom to hold the bottom layer on. And here is the bottom layer. It has rastered pockets to countersink the heads of those screws that are coming in from the bottom and a hole for the battery pack so we can turn it on and off. So now we're at the laser cutter and we're going to do those standard settings. We tell it what kind of material we're cutting, which is birch plywood, and we put in the thickness of the material and it gets its automatic settings from that. But now I'm going to do some manual overrides on the black rastering because Normally that's just about cutting a picture onto the wood. I want to actually carve away a pocket. So I have to manually override the power and speed settings to make the laser stronger so it cuts a deeper pocket. So this is what rastering looks like on the laser cutter. Rather than following vectors like it does for engraving and cutting, it's going back and forth just like a dot matrix printer would. And you can see it's actually carved away some deeper pockets because I changed those settings and it's cutting the two holes in each pocket for the wires on the back of the bulb to stick through. These are the rest of the parts necessary for making the light box. You can see we're cutting the last bottom layer out here. It also has those little rastered pockets for the countersinking the heads of the screws and that's all the parts. The hardware is simple. We have the brads to align the top layers, small screws to put the battery pack in, and brass screws to hold on the bottom layer. So here's a speeded up version of what was really a six minute process to first dry fit all the pieces together for the top. If it doesn't go together without glue, it's not going to go together when you have glue. And once you've guaranteed all those pieces fit together, you start assembling it one layer at a time. Keep a sponge handy to clean up the glue that squeezes out the edges and uh, just put it together. As I said, this took about six minutes in real life. Put some clamps on and set it aside. Now it's time to work on the electronics and these are the LEDs we're using, the fat little white bulbs. The long wire is the positive wire and we always test every bulb before we put it into the assembly and just by holding it up to a cell battery like that. We like to use uh, adhesive copper tape for our circuits so we run one on each side and then 
You put the bulbs in, always making sure that the positives are on that same side and negatives on the other side. And you just bend it back like that, and that holds them in place for the soldering. And I, you know, I have to say, I love to solder. Uh, here I am soldering onto the positive and negative circuits. And then you trim the wires back a little bit because they're sticking out over the edge. Once again, test it every step of the way when you're doing anything with lighting. It saves a lot of heartaches later on. And we made sure that it all works, so now I can just put in the battery pack. I put in the two little screws. We've already cut holes in for those and cut and strip the two wires and solder them onto the two circuits. And there you have a working bulb layer. Push that up through the layer cut for the bulbs and then we had two little screw holes also for holding this strip in place. And now I can go ahead and put the very bottom layer on with the last brass screws. I like to cover those with these little silicon feet uh, that cushion whatever it's sitting on. And there you have the light box with the token box on top. Perfect fit. So this concludes my little mini series on game tokens, the token box, and the light box. I have a lot of other projects, especially projects about making things for games. If you're interested, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.